Securing your Bitcoin uh, doesn't need to be a challenge. Uh, it needs to be user-friendly. It needs to be secure. It needs to be as private as possible. So without further ado, I'm looking really forward to my next talk, special, special tutorial on Dux Reserve multi-signature wallet with Thibaut Marachal or Tip. Uh, he's been on my show several times. He's an awesome, you know, con not only content creator, but, uh, you know, uh, creator and uh, techie. And um, it's a really user-friendly application. And uh, you can, you know, there are some trade-offs still because in the beta phase, but you can already start uh, using it, learning about it, educating yourself. And, uh, you know, it doesn't need to be a challenge, uh, but you need to think about security, about self-custody, especially when there are, you know, large amounts of Bitcoin involved. Uh, how do you, you know, how do you handle your own security? How do you self-custody? And is it user-friendly enough? So all these questions we're going to go through and step-by-step -step, uh, uh, tip is going to show this and how to set up a multi-signature wallet especially you know you, you can watch this on youtube if you want to just you know uh just follow the procedure step by step so i'm really looking forward to my talk and hope if you have any questions let me know make sure you follow me and tip on twitter i'm gonna put it, put everything on the show notes and hope you're gonna enjoy this tip boom tip welcome to the show tip you are uh uh, I know you, you know, we've, we've known each other for so, such a long time and uh, you're, you seem to me a, a sort of a polymath, like a polymath genius. Like, <laughs> I don't know what else you do, you know, do you, are you a coder and uh, do you, what kind of things do you do on the side? <laughs> yeah, it's good to be back. Uh, first off, uh, and I love, uh, love your show, man. It's always, uh, always good to, uh, to chat with you. Um, but no, I mean, uh, genius, far from it. You know, I work with people who are much smarter than I am. Uh, and I don't think also, I guess, intellect or, um, or academic, uh, you know, credentials or any of this make up for, for, uh, for talent or someone who's valuable. It's just, I guess, like work and curiosity. Um, but for, uh, for ducks and, and in general, uh, I, I haven't uh, I haven't actually built the uh, the application. The the person who uh, who has built the application is called Alex Alex Castle Nine. He's been uh, working with me since uh, October on this project, and um, yeah, you know I've done I've done like courses in uh, in uh, programming at university, and I've also did I did a, a web uh, dev course uh back in uh, 2019 i think um but for this product no i haven't built it um it, you know it's dealing with i would say simple libraries but it's still uh it's still uh, related to bitcoin so uh having a professional do it like alex who's been building software for over a, a decade is uh is much uh much more reasonable Okay, so let's let's talk about uh, Dux Reserve, uh, Tib. So, what was uh, what what is the reason motivation behind uh, coming up? You know, creating this this um, application or software um, to secure, to hodl, secure safely uh, your Bitcoin. Sure. I mean, what's the background? Personally, um, I've been on the verge of. Uh, of moving over to uh, to a multi-sig setup for for a while um so i've had different setups right from the of course the 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 infamous hardware wallet the treasure the ledgers the coal card um i've also had a uh, blue wallet and green as mobile wallets on my phone um i started a bunch of options uh, such as multi-sig with uh, casa I've played around with uh, Unchained, though I've never uh, actually been uh, um, a customer or user of their product. And of course, I use the Spectre as a, you know a, a great wrapper for Bitcoin Core to manage keys and multi-sig. Uh, tried also Lily Wallet, Sparrow Wallet, so a bunch of different options that are all great and all have different trade-offs, but. I felt there. I needed something that was much more, much easier with uh, less features, and um, and still, you know, 
with 100% control over my keys, no dependency on anybody, and, um, and, and yet really have a, a good user experience that isn't too, uh, too complicated and intimidating. And so really that's the, that's the motivation behind Ducks is, is allowing users to be able to essentially gradually improve their security of their Bitcoin holdings by saying you start with one hardware device that you connect to Ducks and you create a wallet and the wallet is just protected you know, by one device which holds a key, which allows you to spend from that wallet. And then gradually as you get comfortable with the interface, um, you can, on the side, create a vault. And a vault is similar to a wallet, it's, but it has, instead of having only one key, it has multiple keys. And, and uh, so that's famous, you know, multi-sig uh, vault. And so um, by doing this, you know, the, the bet that we've done for, for us is that it's, uh, it's much more um, trivial, much more accessible as a, as a way to hold your funds. Um, and at the same time, you know, because we released it uh, open source and free, uh, our goal is to uh, is to just make that great product available to anybody, uh, and then of course get get some feedback and uh, and and iterate from there and, and really build um, build the home to your Bitcoin, like the the place where you can store your coins, um, whether it is for regular access in a in a in a single key wallet or if it's for long term storage. Uh, with a multi-sig vault and that that's really up to you um, and so you know we believe that the, the ux for this is has been improved and uh and yeah we'll, we'll iterate from this okay so a uh, docs reserve is it targeted at uh, noobs or or is it like for people who are already at least familiarized you know acquainted with with uh, usage uh practical usage of hardware wallets and you know their features and uh like, is anything like important to differentiate before we go into this special tutorial? Yeah, I would say so. Dux is, um, I wouldn't say it's for the power users. I wouldn't say it's for the, the really technically savvy Bitcoin users who want a lot of uh, sophisticated features or, or, you know, products that offer features such as. UTXO management con control or, or having your own node or, or, um, or having, you know, a lot of different hardware devices that are compatible. Like right now, Dux is very simple. It allows you to connect um, three different types of hardware devices. So a ledger, a call card, and a treasure. Um, it only allows you to create one type of multi-sig vault, which is a two of three. So it's really for the user who has been, you know, on the verge, like waiting to, to try multi-sig, but has been intimidated by the current options out there because of the complexities to use them or just because, yeah, there were just too many steps to get started. For instance, uh, you know, we don't require users to run their own full node. So that's a privacy trade-off, right? Because we're, we're trusting Blockstream. We're using the API called Explora to give users their balances and then to allow users to, uh, to spend and, win and broadcast their transactions from their Dux Vault or Dux Wallets into, uh, into the Bitcoin network. Whereas, you know, if you're using a, a Spectre, for instance, you're going to have a much greater privacy. You're going to have much more features to manage your keys, yeah. uh, but you're going to have to run a node and, and the interface is, is going to be a bit more it's giving you more choices. And so when you give users more choices, the user has to know what he's going to be doing, right? Otherwise, you're going to either be kind of uh, paralyzed by the, the, the choices that you have to make um, or, or you're going to make mistakes, right? And create some kind of weird quorums like a three of three multi-sig. And if you lose one key from that, you're toasted, right? Yeah. I mean, you always have your backups, but you would lose access to the, the sort of signing, uh, the exactly. signing layer. Mm -hmm. And so with Ducks, we give you less options, right? We tell the user straight up, like this is an opinionated software which will guide you in one way that we think is right for us and perhaps for a lot of other users, but it's not going to be right for everybody. And so some people will definitely be better off using, uh, using another alternative. But you can use all all hardware wallets, you know, that are 
that are known, you know, to let's say the average, let's say, you know, Trezor, Ledger, uh, Cold Card, Bitbox, or all of. So right now we can we can only do Ledger, Trezor, and Cold Card. Okay. We've had the uh, a lot of users have asked for uh, the Bitbox, so we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be adding the Bitbox at some point in time. Development is gonna be a bit slower now because we're. We're working on uh, on another uh, on another product um, to complement the, the the key manager, but uh, yeah, it, it'll be uh, it'll be added. And the goal really is to add you know the wallets or or I should say the hardware devices that uh, that users like to use, uh, and then offer other options uh, such as you know you can sign using uh, a USB cable, but you can also sign using a micro SD and at some point a uh, QR code. Right. These are really the three options that that are really interesting for multisig. Um, but right now, the, the you know the most uh, popular that we have is of course the USB one. Uh, and users can use a cold card with a micro SD in a completely air gap mode at the moment. So that that option we really wanted to add it at the beginning, uh, and then we'll see. You know, Kobo Vault has been uh, been a great candidate as well. Uh, Passport from uh, Foundation Devices is another cool one as well. If uh, yeah, it's air -gapped. Uh, sorry, when it gets yeah. shipped, mm -hmm. completely air gapped. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we shall see. Okay, so um, you can use uh, Dark's Reserve like on both desktop and mobile. Is correct? Uh, at the moment, it's only uh, it's only on desktop. Desktop. Yeah. It's on uh, on yeah, Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. Okay. All right. Um, I mean, if you want, we, we can just, you know, go dive into that and, you know, screen share. I'll, you know, I'll mute myself. And as we go along, I might, you know, ask you a couple of questions for clarity. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Do you want me to, uh, you want to do it or should I share my screen? Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you want. Yeah. Please uh, screen your share. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, screen. All right. Share screen. I'll, I'll do that right now. Thank you. Um, I'm looking for the screen share. All right. Can you can you see my screen? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. So um, so right now uh, I'm actually so I already have an account. Well, I mean I already have a configuration file loaded in the app um, so uh, I actually what would be better is that I actually create a vault with you right um, that should be much better and I have just give me a sec I have my keys uh, right right behind me all right so what we'll do is that I'll reset the account so here what it's what this is doing is it's just uh, uh, flushing the uh, the configuration file for my vaults and uh, and wallets so that we can start fresh boom so now we're fresh as a new user it's as if i downloaded the uh, the latest version of the app this version is a uh, 0.4.1 and it includes the latest updates that we uh, that we added to the software so um, so let's get started. So yeah, we explained to the user, of course, that we're in beta mode. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, make sure that you don't uh, you don't deposit large amounts of Bitcoin. Uh, you can also use it in testnet. Uh, so that really is up to you. Actually, I'll, I'll use the testnet for now. It can make sense. Um, so here, as a user. I'm presented with the option to create a, a wallet or a vault. So and we explain, you know. We explain to them what it is. So the vault is, sorry, the wallet is, uh, it's pretty, you know, self-explanatory. Uh, you connect one hero device and, uh, and then Ducks will have a, a watch only wallet of that device. And then you can use it to manage all your, your balances and transaction from there, or you can create a vault. Uh, and really the vault is, uh, is the most interesting piece of the product here. It, uh, it allows you to essentially connect multiple devices into one single vault and manage them all from there. So we'll create a vault. Um, at this point in time, as a user, I'm also asked to enter a password. Uh, and that password is uh, essentially to encrypt all my configuration file. 
on the on the computer. So that way um, it's better for privacy, right? All my XBubs are not going to be left in uh, in plain text in a in that configuration file. It's uh, it's encrypted with my password. I can also decide to do it later, and if I do it later, Ducks will use its own uh, key to encrypt the file. Um, and so the trade-off here is it's easier. I don't have to remember the PIN, uh, but uh, I trust I have to rely on Ducks to decrypt this uh, this config file. So I'd much rather you know enter my own password and and uh, create create it at this moment. So here, as I said earlier, you know we only allow a user to create uh, a vault of two of three keys. So I'll go ahead and do this, and we'll call it the uh, the Kevan uh, the Kevan storage. Uh, just for you, I'll dump a few uh, TBTC in there. Um, and so here. I'm asked to, add, to include the first hardware device. So as mentioned again, I can use call card, treasure, and ledger. Uh, let's start with the treasure. I have the first key. And so here, I'll just plug in my treasure, as you see here, if you see the, the camera. Um, and then I'll, I'll enter my pin. And so the pin you know, layout is displayed on the treasure, so you see you see those little, uh, this little dial here. Uh, of course, it changes at every session. Um, and so here, I'll just enter it right away. All right. Okay. So now it's extracting the XPUB from the treasure. Um, so now it detected the device. We're including the fingerprint here, which is unique to the hardware device. And done. So here I can see the public key. I'll show it because it's a, it's a testnet XPUB. It's a TPUB, right? So it doesn't really, uh, doesn't really matter for privacy. Uh, and then I can confirm the hardware device. And move on to the next one. So you see, it's pretty, pretty, you know, simple at this time. There's nothing, nothing too crazy, uh, even though it's it's like multi-sig. So I'll do the same thing for ledger. Plug in my ledger. I enter the pin code, and then I go into the Bitcoin app. And so in the back end here, you know, we're using HWI, which makes it extremely easy to, uh, to integrate with different hardware devices, whether Ledger, Trezor, or Quill Card. And uh, boom, we're good. So another TPUB, this one is for Ledger. It has this unique fingerprint. I'll confirm it. And then the next one, we'll do a Quill Card. And so Quill Card here, I have the option again if I want to use it uh, fully air gapped, I can. Uh, or if I want to plug it in and export the um, the key uh, with a USB cable, I can do that as well. So I'll do it with the cable for now because I'm being lazy. And uh, we'll do the SD for SD card for signing. So now I entered my prefix. I checked that the two words match the ones that I had and then entered my password. And okay, ready. So again, as you see, even though I'm using a ledger, a call card and a, and a treasure, the, uh, the experience here is pretty similar. It is the same process is going on, which, uh, which really makes those devices um, it, in my mind, like they're the, the exact same things, right? They're just signing devices um, as part of a as part of a vault. And so here, you know, I can review my my vault details. Uh, I'm comfortable with the devices that I've added, so I'll just confirm. Um, and so here, because I have a call card, I'm gonna have to export a vault setup file to my call card. And this is uh, this is only for call card, and it's a way to tell the call card, look, you're part of this vault, 
and it's signing with these two other uh, XBOBs. Uh, and so the call card is essentially going to be using the quorum of XBOBs that is included in that setup file as a way to verify change addresses. So it's um, you know it's a little bit of a of, a, of an additional security feature that call card does in order to make sure that the um, these transactions that it is signing are are bringing the change back into the the right place within the vault. Um, and that's an additional security features that Trezor and, and Ledger do not do uh, natively that call card. So I'll just skip it from now and we'll, we'll do it later in the dashboard if we want to. But um, so here, you know, I have the creation of my vault. Uh, it's Kevan storage. It has a Trezor, a Ledger and a call card. Um, and so I can, you know, access my dashboard. And so before accessing my dashboard, what Dux uh, tells you is to export the configuration file. So the configuration file of a vault is, is the file which essentially tells you where your Bitcoin is, where to find your Bitcoin within the vault. So it's extremely important to, to keep it uh, with your different backups for your hardware devices, for instance. Now, of course, the, uh, you have to make sure that this, uh, this file is stored in the right place because if it is in plain text, um, it is going to leak all your account balances and, uh, and transaction history. So here you're seeing that we're exporting an encrypted file uh, with the extension .ducks. So this one is not going to be an issue if ever you know someone were to find it. Um, oh, oh yeah, it's showing me where where it went. And so you see here it, it's a uh, it's an encrypted file. Uh, but if I go back in my user settings, I can download the um, the plain text unencrypted version. And so this one would have, uh, of course, details that I don't want anybody to see because it's um, it's essentially giving access to my uh, to my bank account uh, without uh, being able to withdraw, but still a pretty big uh, privacy leak. And so here at this point, yeah, there you go. Uh, so the, the the vault loaded. You already have a 1.69 euro on the on this vault. So uh, congrats! It's basically uh, you know because I used this vault in the past, I used the same uh, the same devices. It's just loaded up the previous history of the vault. Um, and so here, you know, you can see pretty standard information that you would see on a, on a wallet or, or a vault, right? So here I'm in my Kevan storage within the vault section. Uh, and then that vault uh, page, I can see the balance, I can deposit funds. Um, what we allow user to do, of course, just generate a bunch of addresses. Um, it's gonna loop at some point if you just don't use these addresses. And until you use those addresses and, and that Bitcoin is, is linked to an address, you'll just see the, the same set of addresses uh, looping over and over again. Uh, and within your transaction history, you know, you can click any transactions to, uh, to actually see more details. So here, you know, we see it's been a while, Monday, March 15th. It has a lot of confirmations because uh, it's on testnet as well. Um, and then I can view it in, uh, in Blockstream Explorer if I want to. So it's pretty, um, it makes it pretty simple uh, in that uh, up until now. Um, in the settings page, um, you know, you can change language. So for the, the French people here, uh, this is pretty cool. Like we decided to add it in French. So, uh, so that way, you know, my mom and, uh, and uh, all our French moms can, uh, can now use uh, Ducks uh, Reserve, which is pretty cool. Um, you can also change the currency. Um, so, you know, if uh, say Peter Schiff wanted to uh, price his Bitcoin in, in gold, he can, uh, he can price it in gold and actually see, uh, you know, the demonetization of gold in, in real time from his dashboard. Um, and uh, yeah, so you're seeing it here. Uh, so that's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty neat feature I, I, I find. Um, but I, you know, I'd much rather use the Euro shitcoin. Uh, you can also convert to Satoshi. So that's a, that's a pretty standard feature, right? That's in a bunch of, uh, of wallets, but it's uh, pretty great when you're, uh, when you're loading up on, on sats every week. Um, and then we have a bunch of other uh, features for notifications. Uh, we want to really want to build the product in a way that, that works for the user. So uh, adding custom notifications when you receive 
uh, your weekly uh, automated DCA, you know, could be a, could be a cool one or, you know, th there are a lot of ideas that we have in the backlog that we'll add uh, as we, as we refine the product. Um, and I would say the last piece of interesting information in that page is the, um, the section where you actually manage your configuration file. And this is what I mentioned, right? You can have a secure Dex export, which essentially exports your configuration file completely encrypted. And the encrypted secret is your pin that you entered at the beginning of the app, um, or you can export it unsecure. And secure, it's great because you are completely um, free. There's no vendor lock-in with Ducks. It is interoperable with other wallets. So far, we've, uh, we've used a similar configuration file format as uh, Blue Wallet. Um, but in the future, you know, we'd like to add like an export to uh, Caravan, for instance, right? So that way you can really like, you can create a, a vault or a wallet on Ducks, and then you can export it and upload it again on Caravan and really check that the, you're, you're seeing the same information and that, uh, you know, there's, again, you're, you're really confirming that there is no uh, lock-in and that if you want to move, you can move. Can you, can you um, upload that so that's, uh, configuration file into Spectre? Uh, that's not possible, right? I mean, or can yeah, you? Yeah, you, you should be able to, right? It's just yeah. a matter of uh, and vice versa, uh, right? Sure that the, Spectre to yeah, Ducks exactly. and Ducks to, okay. And so, so essentially so here, we would have to tell Ducks to reformat the configuration file in a way that is understandable by Spectre or by a Caravan. Right. And, and retroactively, you know, Caravan and Spectre would have to do the same. Okay, so it's becoming more and more everything interoperable. And now you tweeted some time ago, uh, you know, you're inviting, I don't know, uh, techies or coders or whatever security experts to, to do an independent security review. Uh, and, you know, I guess that's also the reason you're telling, you know, you, you're sort of educating people, you know, don't put too much money. This is just in a better phase. So is it in the process of being reviewed, you know, the, uh, what do you call it? Like audit the security or what, or what, do, you, what do you call it? Uh. Yeah. So, I mean, so first of all, you know, Ducks never sees any private key, mm -hmm. right? We only deal with uh, extended public keys, XPUBs. And so this is called, you know, it's public because it's a public key. Like it doesn't allow any, uh, any, risk of theft or loss of, of Bitcoin because all Bitcoin is secured by private keys. So I would say, you know, with that security model, of course, like we're not, um, there's, there's a limited amount of risk that can be created on ducks. Right. Um, but still like, you know, we want to, we want to make sure we're doing the things the right way. And uh, while yeah. of course we built, we built the product and the software in a way that, you know, we believe is the most secure. Um, we, we just want to get more, more eyes on the code and that's why we decided to open source it. Right. Yeah. Uh, and we, we say it on every, you know, every pages, right. It's, uh, don't trust verify on GitHub. I think that's a, that's a kind of a, kind of a tagline that any Bitcoin company should have if, especially your, your, your offering security products. Um, right. and, and the thing is, it's not because the code is on GitHub that the code is secure. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be on GitHub and nobody cares about ducks and nobody reviews the code and everybody, you know, the, the small audience of users who, who use ducks uh, may assume that it is secure because it's on GitHub, but they may have a full sense of security. Right. So, right. so that's why we decided to, uh, to sort of publicly uh, announce that would like some some security researchers or, or you know engineers who understand that oh, kind understand. of stuff to uh, take a look at our code and actually audit it uh, we haven't done any formal audit at the moment it's still mm -hmm. uh, it's still pretty uh, still pretty early but uh, that's the intent that's what we want to do and uh, so we'll do those reviews in, in, uh, in due time and uh, once we believe that the software is stable and that it's uh, it's fully secure yeah. um, and that we're using it with, uh, you know, that I'm storing 100% of my Bitcoin on Dux, using Dux, um, then we'll, we'll be comfortable switching to a, to a version 1.0 mm -hmm. and actually move away from, uh, from the beta. And that may take 
six months or a year. And that's fine. Yeah, that's the process. No, no, I no love rush. your correct yeah. approach to that. But I love the interface. I love the user interface. It looks really slick and smooth and user-friendly. Um, and oh, you can also uh, report uh, bugs or features <laughs> directly in the app. Okay, cool. Uh, and it's uh, it's encrypted. So, uh, you know, uh -huh. let's say, uh, you know, your section on settings page has too many buttons because it's true we have uh, we have way too many buttons uh, create a, a drop down mm -hmm. maybe right that would yeah. be good uh, so you can send the feedback and it's it's going to encrypt the feedback locally and then it's uh, emailing us the uh, the encrypted message and we use uh, so we're using our public keys to encrypt the message and then I have my private key and Alex has his own private key and we we use those to decrypt so it's pretty you know it's a pretty simple feature but uh we wanted to do it uh to respect people's privacy if they share some some personal information right. in there um of course you know never send any uh, any private material like a private key or yeah. a seed or anything like that uh but uh yeah it's uh it's little little good stuff like this that we wanted to add into the into the software okay um let me there was a question i had i think uh regarding like, would it be possible to to create a, you know, like once, you know, if, if a user is under duress or something like for plausible deniability, is it is it possible to create like a, like a, what do you call it? Like a fake wallet or something like that? Like a plausible deniability wallet? Yeah, look, I would say everything is possible with, uh, with uh, I guess, good code and time, right? Yeah. Um, so definitely, yeah, it's something. Uh, it is something that we've talked about with uh, with Alex mm -hmm. having the uh, sort of a, the fake wallet. It could be it could be triggered. You know, say let's say I'm I'm uh, I'm killing the app right now, and I'll and I'll reopen it. Can you can you still see my screen? No. Huh? Uh, no, you stop sharing. Okay, I'll, I'll reshare it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here I'm back in the app. Um, you know, I logged out. I mean, I haven't logged out, but I just killed the app and I, I want to reopen it. Remember, I created the, the password earlier, so I have to re-enter it. Um, here in this page, what we could have is the user creating another password, mm -hmm. and that password leads to a fake wallet or a fake vault oh. that has either a little bit of Bitcoin, yeah. um, just to satisfy the attacker, right? But that doesn't have the uh, the sort of main uh, the main Great. wallet and the main that's vault super. with yeah. all my storage, right? Yeah. So that's something we can do. It's not something we've done at all, but it's something that we could totally do, and that we've talked about um, a few times already. Hey, I love it, man. What's the feedback so far from you know the better users or the people who give you feedback and tested it? I mean, unfortunately, I you know before we start recording, I told you I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do, try to make this up for and and test it myself um, as soon as possible. But what what's the feedback so far from the users? It's been a uh, it's been quite positive. I mean, we've had a, a few bugs here and there. Of course, that's uh, it's expected. Uh, some wallets taking more time to uh, to upload or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but so far, it's been uh, yeah, it's been pretty positive. People like the simplicity of it. Um, sure, it has limitations. I guess the the biggest feature request that we've had is uh, is the ability to add your own full node, which is something that we really want to do. Um, again, as a as a default setup. Um, I want to keep the Blockstream Green, Blockstream uh, Explorer node as a as a default. But if you're an advanced user and you wanna you wanna add your full node, uh, this is something that you can totally do. Um, the other you know big feature request that we've had was related to Bitbox, as I said earlier. I think uh, it's uh, it's obvious now that users want to have uh, different options for for hardware devices, or I should say signing devices. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's been pretty, uh, been pretty positive so far. Um, okay. So if so somebody really has a my node, do, yeah. for example, yeah. you know, if I have a my node, like, uh, would it, how, how much of a challenge is it just to, you know, connect it to, 
um, or go, you know, via, I don't know, a tour onion connection, just, you know, like, like Sparrow does or, uh, or in, in Spectre's case, tour is already integrated and, you know, you can connect it, you know, in different ways, um, either to yeah. Bitcoin core or, you know, directly to via my node to your, you know, so there are two options, right? You can either do it directly from the node uh, interface. So let's say you're using my node or you're using Umbrel. You know, Umbrel, for instance, they have an app store uh, and you can, if you're running your Umbrel, you can go in the app store and you can install Spectre directly on your Umbrel, right? Uh, or you can do the opposite, right? In your Spectre wallet on your desktop, you can go and, and connect uh, an external node like a, like a my node or mm -hmm. like a, an Umbrel. So yeah. you have both ways available mm -hmm. in as, a, as part of the UX. Um, what we plan on doing, I think, at first is allowing Ducks to be deployed on a on a on a node interface first, and then uh, and then integrate a node. Um, you know, giving the ability to a user to add a node directly from their Ducks uh, desktop app. It's going to be uh, you know two different phases. Mm -hmm. Again, it's just time. It's time and, and uh, focusing on, on that feature uh, and adding it so that users can actually use it uh, and hopefully, uh, hopefully soon. Awesome. So d did we miss anything? Um, is there anything like we should, we should mention? Bef uh, yeah, we haven't done a... If you want to do a quick withdrawal, I can show you uh, how it actually works. Uh -huh. So he here again, I'm in default Satoshi, so I can you know change it to BTC or or euros that I want to withdraw. I only have one euro sixty eight that I can withdraw, so it's uh, three thousand sats, not a lot. So I'll, I'll withdraw two thousand sats, mm -hmm. roughly one euro. Yeah, and I'll have the low time preference, so I'll, I'll choose a uh, slow. Um, you can also set a custom fee. Right. Um, and this custom fee, it uses the uh, purge limit. So right now the purge is at nine sats per V-byte. We're using um, you know, actual Bitcoin mainnet data mm -hmm. for, for the main pool uh, fee rate calculation. But uh, on testnet, it doesn't really matter because it's, uh, it's its own uh, separate network. Yeah. So if I, go, you know, if I go under this, under this uh, purge rate, uh, we'll tell the user, hey, you know, make sure that the fee is at least nine sats. Otherwise, you'll, you know, you'll be purged from the mempool and, and just yeah. miners will, you know, won't, won't even be able to uh, include you in the next blocks. Yeah. And users, you know, should always check the mempool first, uh, mempool space before uh, setting their own custom fee, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're using actually a mempool.space uh, API mm -hmm. for, for fee rate. They have a you know really well done uh, API which gives us the, uh, the different uh, fee rates and mm -hmm. so based on that you know we're able to say you know if you want a medium slow or fast uh, into the next block type of confirmation uh, this is how much you're going to be paying. Um, you can also signal RBF on your transaction or, oh, or turn great. it off. So, so you can you know RBF uh, re replaced yeah. by fee and you can bump in in the in the mempool if. Uh, if you chose, let's say you chose slow first, you're, you know, sending it and then you realize, okay, you know, crap, it's taking too long. Uh, I yeah. want to, I want to speed it up. We'll go back to your Ducks dashboard and you'll just bump it. Oh, super. That's great. Yeah. So here it's telling me I don't have enough confirmed funds. Um, so I assume that the, you know, the amount of fees is just too much for the amount of sats that I have here. So let's mm -hmm. say, say I want to send 200 sats. That should, yeah. uh, that should be good. I have not enough confirmed funds. Interesting. <laughs> Let me try this okay. again. These are the you know little little glitches, I guess, on the live. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll switch to mainnet just to see if it works out on my mainnet. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, I'll I'll close the app and I'll I'll reopen it in mainnet to see if it works. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do have a. Um, we do have issues with the uh, the fee calculation that's being added on top of the uh, on top of the um, the current amount that I want to withdraw. Tech. So I'll show my screen again. Mm -hmm. Now 
I'll say forgot password. And I'll add a wallet this time. This one I'll call it test. And I'll add the ledger. Yeah, I wanted to show you the uh, the withdrawal from uh, from a vault. I may actually have a config file on my computer that has the mm -hmm. the three hardware devices already connected. That's the beauty of software, right? There's always a little edge case which is uh, which is going to glitch in the live uh, in the live demo. <laughs> Like in Matrix. <laughs> Always exactly, a right? Yeah. Look, actually, I'm showing you how to uh, create a wallet on your uh, on, mm -hmm. on the Ducks. So yeah. here, you know, for, for Ledger, you know, Ledger, you have Ledger Live. Ledger Live is a really nice product. So there's no need to use, I would say there's no need to use Ducks for, for that unless you want to diversify the, um, the exposure, mm -hmm. right? You don't want to have... Uh, Ledger provide you the hardware device and also provide you the uh, the interface to access that device. Um, so Dux again here is is a generic uh, option. Um, otherwise, you know what's good here is that you're yeah you're completely independent from Ledger um, and and that interface I think is pretty useful for cold card. Because cold card, there's no ledger live for cold card or or treasure suite uh, for cold card. I think you know mostly users right now use Spectre for cold card or mm -hmm. Electrum, yeah. which are great options, but uh, they're a bit technical. Um, so I think having another alternative like uh, like Dux or I think Lily Wallet also uh, you know give you uh, a pretty good um, a pretty good product experience. Uh, it's uh, it's just a nice nice option to have. So what I'll do here is I'll withdraw. Here I have you know, way more fun. So it's going to be, should work. Boom. Okay. Mm. So here, you know, you're reviewing your unsigned testnet transaction. Mm. Um, so we're including, of course, a destination address. We call it output one. Um, and we're calling output two here, the change address uh, mm -hmm. that you're very familiar with. We explain to the user what it is. Um, and the reason why we're showing it here, because usually wallets are going to, I'm not going to show it to you, uh, is because on the, once we're going to be signing, we're actually, you know, asking the user to verify it on the, uh, on the yeah. ledger itself. Um, and then, you know, standard, you know, the amount, the network fee. So here the network fee, of course, is, is insane uh, because uh, I picked, uh, I think I, I'm picking, I'm picking slow, but I'm, I'm just not sending enough Bitcoin for it, right? I'm just sending 10 bucks of Bitcoin and the fees must be 15 bucks. So, you know, 190%, uh, which is not recommended, but uh, again, we're on testnet, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then, you know, yeah, we're, you know, giving the user the, the new wallet balance. So here I can sign the transaction and it's basically going to talk to my ledger and ask me to verify the transaction details. And so here, you know, we, we put on the, uh, on the interface, of course, all the details that the user is going to be asked to check on his, on his device. Yeah. Let me ask you something basic, uh, Tip. So, you know, there's a lot of Trezor users out there. So uh, usually, you know, when people, uh, and it's, I'm, I'm not sure about Trezor, but is it still like web-based? Like you go into a web portal on Trezor and you're, you know, relying on a third party server, right? But this way, if you're using Trezor, let's just say, you know, a single wallet with, with Docs Reserve, you're not relying on a third party reserve. You're, you know, directly interacting with the, uh, uh, you know, with the with the security of the hardware, is is that correct to say? Or yeah, so the the key the key always stays on on the device, right? right? So here I have the ledger. The ledger has the private key, which is going to be signing on the transaction. Yeah, but I mean for privacy this. concerns, you know, for privacy that... concerns, Dux isn't uh, isn't privacy conscious at the moment. Okay, so okay. meaning that if you're using Dux. 
you're going to be broadcasting your transactions using Blockstream's API. So right. here, you're basically, there is a privacy trade-off. Like if you really want to be private and you never want to reveal your transaction to anybody, um, you're going to have to run your own node and, and add your node to the uh, vault or, or wallet interface. So that's something you can do with Spectre, for instance, at the moment, uh, and, uh, and Sparrow. But it's not something you can do at the moment with uh, Ducks. It is something we want to add 100%. Uh, we just need to, you know, we need more time, basically. And so as, a, as an MVP, as a first product, we decided that it was better to, um, to provide a great UX, uh, focus on that, and, and then add the, uh, the full node support later. Um, yeah, great. And so here, as you see, you know, I'm not sure you're going to see it on the on the camera, but you can. You're reviewing, you know, output one. Reviewing the amount. Yeah, I'm not sure you're seeing anything, by the way, but uh, I'm, I'm showing it to you. Yeah, yeah. This is the what a user should, uh, you know, should do every time, you know, whatever transaction every, details, every single time. everything check them, you know, check everything on on the hardware itself, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great. So here I'm reviewing everything, right? I'm accepting it, reviewing yeah. the second output, which is the change address, right. and then I'm confirming the fees and the transaction. So right. here I signed and done. It says you can now unplug the device. Mm -hmm. And so here, this is one last phase, right? I'm reviewing everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm checking that the signature is applied and it's been applied. I'm checking the destination addresses, the change addresses, the amount, everything. Once I'm happy with it, I'll hit broadcast. Mm -hmm. And here we're telling the user, careful, you know, you're broadcasting your transaction via Blockstream. And this is where, you know, if you want better privacy in the future, you'll be able to add your full node. But at this time, at this point in time, uh, you're going to be trusting a, a third party to broadcast the transaction okay, for gotcha. you. Okay, no, that's good. You know, at least people are So informed. the user can cancel if they want. Exactly. Yeah. We're really yeah. giving the info. We're explaining. I think there's a, a lot of educational, um, you know, aspect that needs to be included in, a, in such a product. And so uh, yeah. we're, we're, we're trying to do our best for this. And so yeah. here you know, I hit broadcast and the transaction was broadcast. Right. So when do you expect the, the first, you know, official release of the more, you know, privacy enhanced or whatever features uh, going to come? And, and, you know, the official release, w w when do you expect that? Is that going to take like six months or a year or so? I don't know. Uh, okay. I, I, you know. I'd love to tell you two weeks, um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. So here yeah, it shows up in the unconfirmed at the moment. Wonderful. I mean, it, it is, it is, uh, it shouldn't be too hard. Um, but again, right, you, you never know in software, there's always bugs. And, uh, and then because it is Bitcoin, you want to you wanna build software slowly and make sure that it's stable and, and safe before yeah. You know, pushing it to production. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, that was a really cool. No, I love I love the user interface. It's pretty much self-explanatory. Everything, the features, the functions. So yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to add or? Um... No, I mean uh, nothing else to add really. Um, what we you know what we're doing at the moment is really testing the testing the app, uh, making sure that. Um, the core features are there and I think they're there uh, and then we're really building a backlog of feature requests yeah. uh, we're not getting too many bugs reported now right. so uh, it's a good sign mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah we'll keep iterating on that making sure the product is easy and simple to use and, uh, and, and then add other features right um, something that we really want to add for instance is the ability to uh, to buy and sell um directly from from that vault experience um and so that way you know instead of you having to go in a on another exchange and then you know asking the exchange to withdraw into your your uh, your vault or your wallet uh you can do that 100 percent everything from that interface mm -hmm. um so that's something we're we're working on at the moment um and uh, yeah, then uh, we'll, we'll see what uh, users demand. That's great. So, Tib, before we wrap up, yeah, you want to tell my listeners like where they can find Dax Reserve, where they can find you, and anything coming up? Are you writing any new articles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I, uh, I'm not writing a new article at the moment, though I'd, I'd love to. I have to uh, get back into this. You write great articles, really. <laughs> awesome. You. Your last article was amazing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, people can uh, reach out to, uh, to me on Twitter. Uh, my handle is T-H-I-B-M underscore. Uh, or they can, you know, reach out to uh, Ducks Reserve directly. So it's uh, Ducks, D-U-X, Reserve, no space, no underscore on Twitter. Uh, we also have a Telegram. It's the same handle. Uh, and so this is where people can go and, uh, and, you know, ask questions about the product, you know, give us feature requests or, or any, uh, you know, ask anything that they want. Uh, we're often pretty, pretty fast and pretty, uh, pretty reactive on those channels. And uh, yeah, I mean, look, we're, we've built Ducks for, for ourselves first, mm -hmm. right? We, we built it to, to store our own funds uh, securely and, and peacefully and uh, with uh, simplicity. And so, um, you know, if, uh, if other people find it interesting and, uh, and want to give us feedback, uh, please uh, reach out to us. Hey, Tib, that was great. Uh, it was just amazing. So thank you so much for your time and effort and, you know, putting so much uh, soul and heart <laughs> and energy into this project. And yeah, uh, keep it up and hope we're going to talk soon. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks, okay, Tib. Take care. Have a great weekend. Bye. Okay, so that was Thibaut Marechal. In short, Tib with his Ducks Reserve. It's a great product. Uh, you know, it's still in development, of course, but you can test it, you know, for learning educational purposes, test it. Uh, you know, you get familiarized with the hardware wallets, you you know, you know how to send, receive, what is privacy, what is not privacy. So uh, eventually, uh, who knows, you know, in six months, 12 months, we're going to have an official release and then you can use it, you know, the same way on, on let's say, on the privacy level or on some other features, um, uh, you know, like Sparrow, like uh, Spectre wallet, uh, sig you know, single sig uh, or multi-sig wallet. So... Make sure you follow uh, Tip on and Ducks Reserve on Twitter. Make sure you follow me. Subscribe, please, on my YouTube channel and my podcast platform, Podcast Show, which is distributed on any on all the other you know well-known uh, podcast platforms. And if you have any questions, suggestions for future special tutorials or interviews you want to have, uh, please let me know. And make sure you follow me on Twitter. My handle is Kevin Davani. Thank you so much again, and I'll see you soon.